I welcome you all, and I am very, very honored that Reverend Temple asked me to speak this morning. I don't know if any of you have ever heard this story of Mahatma Gandhi. He was considered the father of India and brought India to independence. A woman came with her child to Gandhi and walked in and said, Gandhi, tell my son to stop eating sugar. And Gandhi said, go home and come back in six months. Okay. She went home. She came back in six months. She brought her son to Gandhi and she said, please tell my son to stop eating sugar. And he looked at the little boy and he said, stop eating sugar. She went to walk out and she turned around. She said, I'm, I'm a little confused. She said, I came here six months ago. I asked you this question. You sent me home and now you're telling me the thing that you could have told me six months ago. Why did I have to come back six months later? And he said, I had to stop eating sugar first. <laughs> so so this, uh, this is the essence, uh, this is the essence of authenticity, the absolute integrity that says, I will not tell anyone how to do anything unless I've experienced it myself. So today, I promise you, I will not tell you anything that I have not experienced myself. I talk a lot about relationships, how to use them as a barometer to see where we're really at, how healthy we are, what we need to work on. Our relationships show us who we really are and where we need to pay attention. <clears throat> now, I'm very respectful of relationships, and I want you all to have strong, healthy ones. But very honestly, the only relationship I really care about is the relationship that you have with yourself. The relationship that you have with yourself correctly reflects how you understand the universe and your relationship with it. The degree that you know and love yourself is the degree that you will know and love the universe. How well you understand your human existence will accurately reflect your understanding of how the world works. This is the microcosm in the macrocosm. A human life holds all the elements of the larger whole. To understand the self is to understand the universe. <clears throat> and that's why authenticity equals consciousness. To know the self is to know the whole. For example, when you're sitting in your room, in your house, and you're surrounded by the walls of your house that define the space you sit in, you feel that the space inside your house is separate from the space outside your house. But if we tear down the walls of the house, the space inside the house becomes the same as the space outside. It's all the same space made out of all the same stuff. Our physical body is the house, and most of the time we feel separate from the source of the universe. But it is in that physical body that we realize who we truly are by becoming more and more conscious. This awareness reveals authenticity. And the more authentic you are, the more awake and aware you are, and the more connected you are to the source of all energy that operates the universe. Let's talk about spiritual experiences so we can get that out of the way. Many of us have bought into the hype that the idea of attaining consciousness is inextricably linked to an experience, a divine one, but an experience all the same. But nothing could really be further from the truth. Truth is not a noun. It's not a place that you get to and you stop. Truth is a verb. It's an experience that keeps moving. I've known people that have had wild and intense spiritual experiences 
and I'm here to say that they have very little to do with consciousness. Often on drugs, people have experience of oneness, only to wake up in the morning and feel separate and alone. You can have a spiritual experience and still live a very unconscious life. <clears throat> and that's because spiritual experiences pass like everything else in the universe. Everything is moving and changing all the time. Often my clients come to me and tell me they've had this ground-breaking, earth-shattering epiphany. And I tell them that that's great. And then I say, what are you going to do with it? What are you going to do about it? Because unless you do something with your realization, you might as well be taking drugs, smoking a joint, you know, the next morning when you get up and you can't remember those earth-shattering realizations. <clears throat> so remember, it's not about the experience you had, but about this present moment, what you are experiencing right now. That is where true spirituality occurs. We may have had a divine experience of the truth, but have we internalized it? Can we live it? <clears throat> I don't know if any of you know the story of the Buddha. The Buddha is the enlightened one, the Bodhisattva. And he sat, actually sat under the Bodhi tree for 40 years. And he asked himself the quintessential question, who am I, who am I? And the answer that he got back again and again was nati, 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 not this, not this, not this. And after 40 years, he had this unbelievable realization and he heard from the heavens, you're free, you can go, you've attained nirvana. And the first words that came out of his mouth was, I can't go until I take all sentient human beings with me. Because in his realization, he realized what it was to be human. He really, truly connected to that journey. And that compassion for what it was to have a human life just totally opened his heart. And the realization that he had was that it's through your humanity that you touch your divinity, not the other way around. He knew he had to bring his truth back into the world. And what about the Zen cone that says, before enlightenment, I chopped wood and carried water. After enlightenment, I chopped wood and carried water. Spiritual experiences come and go, but life remains constant. How we live our experience of truth is what determines our authenticity. We may have had an epiphany a glimpse of how things really are, and intellectually we get it. But can we put it into practice? Can we bring it back into life and be what we know? <clears throat> the process of coming out of our heads and into our hearts is the process of authenticity, a chance to truly be in the present moment. You cannot think your way to authenticity. You must feel it. And in order to feel it, the mind must be quiet. When the mind is quiet, that's when the heart opens. And finally, we are able to sit squarely in the middle of our life, feel it, rather than think about it. If the mind never stops, you can never be authentic. When the mind is frantic, you hear all those other voices in your head other than your own. Your mother's voice, your father's voice, your partner's voice, your boss's voice. When all those voices are finally silent and you only hear your own voice, that is the beginning of authenticity. The more real you become, the more potent your energy becomes. People pick up on it. You radiate. Remember, a person's energy is the vibration of their consciousness. But being authentic takes work. It's not just kicking back and saying, let it rip and let whatever come out of your mouth comes out and 
It's not about that. The price of authenticity is awareness. And awareness is consciousness in action. Being conscious means you have to be willing to stay awake when it's a whole lot easier to go to sleep. This is big stuff and not for the weak at heart. A lot of folks talk the talk, but how many actually walk the walk? To be true to yourself at the deepest level is the work of a lifetime. So in the spirit of awareness, these are some of the things you need to do in order to become more conscious. Number one, take responsibility for all of it, not just the parts you like. I had a client come to me a while ago. Uh, he was a financial planner and he was looking to build his business. And he told me a story of how he was in Publix and he was picking out some vegetables and he happened to end up talking to the person standing next to him and in a very short period of time, he realized that he had a new, a possible new potential client. He was very excited about that, took full responsibility for it, felt that his karma had brought this person to him and you know things were really rocking and rolling. Later that day, he got a speeding ticket. He totally, immediately, went right into victim consciousness, felt that it wasn't his fault, it had nothing to do with him. He took full responsibility for making that connection happen in Publix, and yet none whatsoever for that speeding ticket. Here's the deal, you can't have it both ways. Either you create it all, or it's all random. My experience is that we create it all. Taking your power back means stepping up and taking responsibility for all of it. No more excuses, no more victim consciousness. Understanding this can sometimes be tricky. For example, if I walk up to you and smack you, and then you walk up and smack me, you're like, I know why she smacked me, I smacked her. I, you know, I totally get it. <laughs> that is instant karma. That we don't have a problem understanding. <laughs> but there's another kind of karma that operates daily. In Sanskrit, it's called Sanchita karma. And it's the karma that has cause and effect, but it doesn't happen in a linear way. So sometimes things happen to us and we don't know why they happen. We can't figure it out. My feeling is it's interesting to know why something happened, and lots of times we can learn from it. But you don't need to know why to take responsibility for what is. If it happened to you, it belongs to you. The bird ate the worm, we don't need to know why. When you accept responsibility for all of your life, all of your life then becomes your lesson and each lesson moves you closer to your authentic self. What happens to you is specifically tailored to you and exactly what you need to learn. I had a client ask me, why is this happening to me? And I said, without skipping a beat, by the way, because what happens to me doesn't happen to you. We all have our stuff. Nobody's stuff is any better or worse than anybody else's stuff. It's just stuff. Either you step up and you own it, and you take your power back, or you become a victim of your life. Another move toward authenticity is bravery. You have to be very brave to have a good life. You have to actually invite the demons in for tea. Okay, what does that mean, invite the demons in for tea? Each of us has a soft underbelly, a place we not only hide for, uh, from others, but more importantly, we hide it from ourselves. 
You have to be willing to bring up what is in darkness. You have to be willing to bring up to light. And actually, it's coming up anyway. It's just whether or not we're consciously part of the process, or we hide it, or we push it down, or we anesthetize ourselves, or distract ourselves. Most people live a life with their vulnerabilities hidden, with the result being that they are continually split off from that part of themselves, the part that they are ashamed of and have trouble accepting. But accepting your soft underbelly makes you real and makes you whole. And there is no way to be authentic and conscious without going to those dark places. Those dark places include feeling unlovable, unworthy, ugly, insecure, scared. We all have them. They are places we would rather not go and avoid at any cost. But it is only in allowing those feelings to be. That is, feeling those feelings without getting attached to them. We feel them and observe them at the exact same time they pass through us. And all of a sudden, you get unstuck. So unless you are willing to feel what scares you, you will stay stuck and never be able to move on. This is the cause of all depression. We think depression is sadness, but depression's not sadness. Sadness is something that is normal and natural in life. Depression is the refusal to feel your sadness. There are as many opportunities in a day to be sad as there are to be happy. Yet when we're happy, we don't think twice about it. We just like, wow, let it rip. Let's just go. But when you're sad, all of a sudden the stuff gets pushed up into your head and you go jamming this stuff down. When you feel it, it actually passes through you at that moment. So unless you are willing to integrate the dark side with the light, you will never feel whole. Being an authentic whole person means both sides, the dark and the light, have integrated and merged. Congratulations, you're a whole person. There is no one braver than a person who feels the anxiety of going to a dark place and goes there anyway. This is a brave person and someone who lives an authentic life. And finally, you cannot be authentic unless you are persistent. Persistence means you do not give up. There is always a deeper place to go, another try to connect to what's real. Persistence is what unlocks the key to the universe. There is nothing more persistent than the infinity of the universe. Regardless of what happens, the earth keeps moving around the sun. What is more persistent than that? And you need to be disciplined. Staying with the commitment to become more awake and aware is a lifetime commitment that never ends. Everybody quits. Don't be one of those people. I know you have all heard of the do-over. It's something that I use all the time in my life and with my clients. Nothing is better than the do-over. We all make mistakes. Lots of us don't do it right the first time, so what? Someone once asked me, how many times do you do it? I'm like, how about until you get it right? That'll work. After all, we've all had so many years of doing it wrong. It's hard to change quickly. This stuff is hardwired. But what if instead of saying, it's already done, just let it be, after we made a mistake, which so many of us do, what if instead of doing that, we use the do-over as an opportunity to be awake and aware and do it right now. Nothing cements change more than awareness and redoing a life lesson from a place of consciousness. This is what has the ability to make it stick and make it change. How many times have you made a plan 
to do something and given up because you lost interest midway, or it just became too hard. No one stays pumped up all the time. That's the reason have a plan, that people have a plan. Not because they needed to feel good, but it's when they don't feel so good. Everyone goes through ups and downs. The difference between those who succeed and those who fail is persistence, discipline, and following the plan you laid out when you did feel good, by the way. So unless you are willing to keep moving forward, no matter what, you can never be authentic. How can you know who you really are if you always quit when things get difficult? Working your way through those uncomfortable places, you end up someone more than when you began. You simply are not the same person, and surely you are more authentic. So here's to authenticity in the present moment. There's nothing more important than this. People talk about this all the time, but what does living in the present moment really mean? Being present is the exact same thing as being conscious and the same thing as true authenticity. That is what truly being alive is about. It is not about the past or the future, but about this moment only. You can only feel joy in this present moment. Even when you are remembering joy in the past, you are feeling it in this present moment. If you are in the past or the future, you are in your head and you can't feel anything. The intellect can never substitute for the heart. Regardless how clever the mind is, if you stay up in your head, you are always going to be one step away from the action. Resisting what is is the cause of all suffering. Living in the present moment means surrendering to that moment, totally being present, feeling yourself in your body, being awake and aware. Most people want to be someplace other than where they're at. The key to authenticity is to know that you are always in the right place at the right time and not wanting to be anywhere else. So remember, authenticity equals consciousness. You've got to be comfortable in your own skin. You cannot enter through your head, but must go through the heart. Being real is a lifetime process that becomes more and more refined. The more authentic you are, the quieter your mind, and the more open your heart. The deeper you understand yourself, the deeper you understand the secrets of the universe, and the more joyful and conscious you become. So here's to being real. I wish you all a wonderful day today. Go out and enjoy. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you.